right, I'm back with another Destiny 2 video. Uh, we are in the, the bleak times of the season now, as tends to happen about halfway through or two-thirds of the way through, where not too much is happening. Uh, we are going to have two more weeks of Festival of the Lost and then this uh, mystery community event. You'll see how engaging that is. Uh, hopefully it is not just more grinding of the stuff we've already been grinding, but my guess is it probably will be to some extent. Uh, today I wanted to briefly touch on a topic I almost really never get into, uh, PvP. And I am not going to be talking about any uh, great strategies or anything, as is not my wheelhouse. But uh, I did write an article today about how the top 10 uh, list for the meta and trials has gotten extremely weird based on how everything has shifted. Uh, Forerunner is the number one weapon. Um, sidearms are huge now. Battle rifles are huge now. Uh, there is not a single hand cannon or shotgun in the entire list, which is pretty wild uh, given how much of a staple that combo has been for the meta for years. Uh, what I wanted to talk about kind of in relation to that is how mad people are about Arbalest and Lorenz Driver. And these, of course, are the two linear fusion rifles that use special ammo. Uh, the Arbalest is just... It's it's also a PvE monster, where it now is anti-barrier, it's one of the best anti-champion weapons in the game, uh, and it just throws a stake through people's heads. So it is essentially like an ultimate low-zoom sniper with crazy like aim assist and hitbox registration, uh, and then Lorenz Driver is essentially the same thing, but in the other slot, and has its little area of effect sucking thing that I think that got nerfed for pvp at least and yet just the ability to kill people with that is still um very readily available all the same and what i'm seeing now is a lot of top pvp players just straight up calling for these weapons to be disabled like shut it down until we can figure out what's going on and bungie has said that they are going to end up getting a nerf they are going to they're going to do what they did with snipers where essentially they're making it harder to aim and hit shots with them under fire i think like most people have said i don't think that's going to be enough to stop how dominant these linear fusions are because they're just they're so low zoom and like quick kill that it's not like scoping fully down a sniper even like even i can hit shots with r plus and lorenz driver where i cannot snipe for the life of me uh, so that is it, it's much much easier and i don't think changes to flinch are really going to be the thing here um, it seems that these would require additional nerfs. Some people were saying they should even go in the heavy slot, uh, which definitely not for PVE purposes. Like that would just wreck those guns for PVE. Um, but the idea here is that why can't Bungie just disable these two guns until they figure out a nerf? So they're not just like as annoying as they are in the PVP meta. Um, fundamentally, I agree with this. I do think that at times, there should be very specific targeted, I guess, bans like this. And I know why Bungie doesn't want to do it, because they don't... Unless something is, like, outright, flat-out, just broken, broken, like it's going to be an auto-win or it's crashing the game or something, they're not really going to disable it. And so they don't want people, you know, especially new players who don't really know what's going on, like, oh, why can't I get this... You know, why can't I bring Arbol, this new linear fusion, into PvP? Like, what's going on? Why is it disabled? Um, and I guess the argument here is that it's it's slippery slope theory. So if you do this with Arbolist and Lorenz Driver, uh, you know, how many weeks does Forerunner stay on top before, you know, you have to ban Forerunner? And the thing is, like, it's not equivalent because I do think Arbolist and Lorenz Driver have been problems like four years at this point, and they have already endured like what were supposed to be significant nerfs that clearly did not do enough to bring them in line. Um, but I do find myself thinking back to like, what if, you know, once upon a time they were banning, you know, they, they blacklisted a revoker or a recluse for PVP. Like, I do wonder like kind of where the line would be drawn in a situation like that. And you could make the argument that that could actually be a good thing because I'm pretty sure the reason we got weapon sunsetting at all was because of, like, uh, Mountaintop, Revoker, and Recluse. I think without those three weapons, we would not have had the concept of weapon sunsetting because they were too strong in, in both... I mean, at least Mountaintop and Recluse were strong in PvE uh, e as well. 
they couldn't ever nerf them enough. They were too strong, and so they're like, okay, we're going to make them non-relevant for endgame PvE and PvP where power matters. Not true anymore, really, except for Trials, uh, because you can now use those in everything, um, including Iron Banner. But like that was kind of the, the justification back then. And I do think it's okay to maybe, like, be, like back when Weapon Sunsling was happening, I thought the solution might be to just target pick some weapons and, like, retire them. And this was kind of the middle ground compromise between, uh, you know, no weapon sunsetting for any reason ever, and then full weapon sunsetting where we were losing like 20 weapons a season or whatever ridiculous thing it got up to, where the idea would be like, okay, if something is just a super big problem endlessly, we throw it in the vault and maybe we work on some nerfs behind the scenes and then bring it back out once it's out of the vault and fixed. And those three were ones I thought of. I thought of doing this for... Um, uh, Felwinter's Lie, like Felwinter's Lie for forever was like all anyone would use. Like, and I was like, okay, you could throw that one in the vault too, uh, and then bring it back later. And like, obviously, meta shift. So, you know, if we just shifted away from that, Felwinter's Lie still exists. It did end up getting some nerfs eventually. But the idea here is that you would essentially be like a penalty box for certain weapons where you would throw them in there, uh, work on them behind the scenes, but in the inner room, they wouldn't be as disruptive as they are. I think you, this would have to be something you would use very, very, very sparingly. I don't think you could just do this, you know, willy nilly with whatever is at the top of the meta board, you know, for for a current week. I think it would have to be something that is like a proven, ongoing problem, and it would have to be mode specific. There was no point in, you know, uh, vaulting temporarily vaulting Lorenz Driver and Arbalest and then not letting us use them in PVE. That would just suck. But we we've seen Bungie does have the ability to. Uh, disable certain weapons or exotics in specific modes. They've done this in the past. They have disabled uh, weapons for, I think, I, f I forget when this happened recently, but I thought it was, uh, was it Quicksilver Storm? It was something where it got, that was just disabled in dungeons and raids, I think. And then I'm pretty sure we have seen other things be disabled just for PvP, like PvP and Gambit or something. So like, this is possible. I don't know if this was always possible, but the game has evolved to the point where this is possible now. And I can see why PvP people are exhausted with these two in, in particular. And they can see like, okay, well, season 19, they're going to do the linear fusion nerf. And there's going to be more flinch when you're aiming linear fusions. And like, we all know that's not going to work. And that's not going to take them down to where they need to be. Because these have already been nerfed a bunch of times. Uh, and that has still not been enough. So like, they don't want to, you know, have that. And then there's going to be a month of... You know, there'll be a season of them working on that and trying to figure out if that's, you know, the right adjustment and then it won't be. And then it'll be another couple of, like it's and then, you know, nine months later and we're still, you know, running into the same problems. And like we have been for at least, you know, two or three years with some of these weapons. So I do think there should be special exceptions in very, very special cases. And I can't I'm having trouble even thinking of too many other situations this would apply to like except maybe going all the way back to some of the more problematic uh, crucible weapons from, from the sunsetting days. Uh, in this case, I, I do think it would be warranted to disable these for a period of time. Uh, I don't think much of value would be lost, um, and I don't necessarily think it would like be some horrific precedent that Bungie could never you know escape from. So long as it's not this, this isn't something that's just like clearing out the meta because... You know, okay, well, no time to explain is on there for four weeks. Let's just let's disable that because it's stupid. Like, it wouldn't be used like that. But for, like, truly, clearly problematic things, I think it could be a useful tool. Uh, but so far, they have not really given any indication that they plan to do anything like this. And they are probably just going to go ahead with this linear fusion flinch nerf um, next season or whenever it's going to come. So, anyway, we'll see what happens. But until then, enjoy your, your headshots and getting headshot because that's just going to keep happening. All right, talk to you later. Uh, thanks for watching.